Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1980s. Well, I hope that hospital had some sexy nurses or something, but they were all gross men. Total sausage fest. It was suffocating. This is episode 230, recorded uh, April 5th, 2023. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Jeff Moore. <laughs> this <laughs> podcast is about horror film release between 1980 and 1989. Each episode, my co-host, Bill Mulligan, Crystal Cleveland, Chad Hunt, and I will tackle another classic horror, not-so-classic mm-hmm. film from this radical, gory, influential, and gruesome decade. Uh, also, we are uh, partnering with Play Now Media, and you can check out our podcast videos on uh, several of their streaming apps, Wicked Horror TV, Free Horror Movies, <laughs> and uh, some other ones. <laughs> I think those are the two main ones for 70s and 80s. So uh, check them out there. Um, so on this podcast, we start out with some basic details about the film that we're covering and our first impressions. Uh, we check out the taglines because, you know, we, we like to learn from the marketing geniuses of the movie industry. And uh, then we'll move on down the line with some visual aids provided by Bill and uh, whatever trips are triggered. So joining me tonight is Crystal Cleveland, the Living Dead Girl and co-host of the Gruesome Magazine podcast. Crystal, what say you? I'm fabulous. I'm really, I'm really... I'm really interested to talk about this movie. I'm, I'm, I, I think I know how most of us are going to feel about it, but I'm actually, I think I'm curious about how the audience feel, will yes. feel about this movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think horror fans are into it. Also with us is Chad Hunt, comic book artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the Classic Era, and the 1970s. Chad, what's hanging? After this movie, a lot of <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, words words they just come out of my mouth i don't mm-hmm. know what they mean uh, yep <laughs> i'm you're here, fine buddy. i'm glad you're here <laughs> that was a wonderful giuseppe my art too uh, oh, thank you yep uh kind of a cross Oof. with a bunch of other characters which there are some things in this movie that are uh, i think seem to be taken from the, other uh, movies as well you captured the horny yoda vibe very well yeah. Yeah. oh yes. yeah that's basic the whole thing or grover mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. <laughs> as last but not least, Bill Mulligan, writer, director, <clears throat> special effects guru, and co host of Decades of Horror in the 1970s, all around nice guy, and the chooser of today's movie. So, blame me. Just want to make sure everybody I don't beat around that. the bush. I am sick as a dog. Uh, this is my spring break. I have driven out to Montreal, Canada, and been greeted with an ice storm and a head cold. But uh, but I, I didn't have the guts not to show up for this because because uh, <laughs> you yeah, chose it because <laughs> I chose it and so you don't just throw something like this in there it's like here you go kids kind of a holocaust well my job is done and off you run you got to stand there and either take the uh, take the accolades or take the lumps no no cats will bother me this uh, episode because oh, all I have is all I have okay. is the ginormous uh, domino who oh, just sits like a lump what a oh, good wow. boy. He is a good boy. He is a good boy. All right. And this is a spoiler podcast. We will talk about everything uh, that we can uh, think of in regard to this movie. movie. We're not going to hide anything. There may be some things we have trouble describing in this movie, but we'll see. Maybe. Uh, Maybe. (laughs) So our movie this episode is Wicked City, an anime from 1987, directed by Yoshiaki Kawajiri. Written by Hideyuki Kikuchi, Yoshiaki Kawajiri, and Norio Osada. Cast includes Yusaku Yara, Toshiko Fujita, Ichiro Nagai, Takashi Ayano, Mari Yoko, Tamio Oki, and Koji Totani. Um, and those are the Japanese. I mean, if, if you if you hear the English dubbing of this, then you obviously have different actors uh, production company is japan home video or jhv video art company and madhouse it was released april 19th 1987 in japan direct to video actually in japan 
and on August 20th, 1993, where it did have a limited theatrical release. <clears throat> and it's also known as Demon Beast City and Supernatural Beast City, which I think were, uh, you know, the, Eng the, the English title that the Japanese gave it. Huh. Um, and the synopsis, which I think will actually describe the movie, <laughs> hopefully, uh, while protecting a signatory to a peace treaty between their peoples, a male human and a female demon discover that their mutual attraction may be the key to unifying their worlds. So you get the idea, folks. If you haven't seen this movie, we got the demon world, we got the human world. And uh, they want to sign their treaty. Uh, this picture is pretty much uh, sums it up. Yes, before we really know what's going on, mm -hmm. this, we see this guy pick a woman up at a bar who actually kills the woman he's trying to pick up in the restroom and then mimics her, I guess. I don't uh, think she killed her, I think she said that she just put her ape. Oh, she did. Well, that's what she said. Yeah. But who can trust a demon? I mean. Anyway, Fair enough. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't she? She turns into the spider-looking thing whose female parts do strange things. That's Maybe she say. didn't kill her because they still technically have the treaty. That might go too far. But because mm -hmm. he's part of the demon shield, you know, eh, kind of gray there. Gray yeah, area. Sorry. So. We're getting too in already. So that, that should give you a hint of what yeah. is to come What here. you're so, in for. Yes. Uh Let's uh, dive, in, dive into, uh, uh, hmm, what do we want to do first? Let's do first impressions first, hence first impressions. Uh, since this is Bill's pick, we'll let him go first. Um, I was going to school in Albany, New York in the late 80s, and they had a wonderful convention there named Fanticon, run by the folks, a small comic book press called Fantico, also had a comic book store. And there was a lot of really cool horror people there. H.G. Lewis was there, Chaz Ballin, really good stuff. And this one guy, and I can't remember his name for the life of me, but he was a writer. And he recommended, he's, you know, I was like, I'm looking for something interesting. Well, okay. So he said, you got to check out Japanese anime horror. And he recommended two things for me. One of them was Wicked City. The other one was something that was makes Wicked City look like Nickelodeon. And I watched <laughs> Now, you got to understand. Like a doji? It might have been. It might have been, or it's like a doji. Um, this was in Japanese. There was no dubbing. There were no subtitles. It, you were on your own. And if, oh, if, you, okay. if you watch this movie and you think, I'm not really sure I understand what's going on, try watching it where you are fluent in only one language, and that language is not Japanese. So um, that it, I was trying to make sense of it and everything. Obviously, the the um, the weird sex was weird. But I really got into this movie because I, I thought I could figure out what was going on, sort of, kind of. And I was just so impressed with, one, the look of it. I love the look. Um, that kind of cyberpunk. It, and, and a little bit of John Carpenter's The Thing. Nothing wrong with that. I, I just like the design so much. And the fact that this was, you know, I wasn't sure who this was for. It wasn't just for an adult audience because they wouldn't have had to do all this this great plot line and everything going with it. But I so, so wanted to really figure it out. And then years later, I saw there it was in the cartoon section of a blockbuster video. There was Wicked City. I'm like, is this a cleaned up version? So mm -hmm. I took it home and watched it and it was not. It was the same movie. <laughs> with English dubbing and uh, finally figured filled in some of the holes there and um, watching it again. Now I still really, really like this movie. I realize it is not for everyone. It is. Um, I mean, there's no other way to say it. It's it, the Japanese are, have no problem in a lot of their films using sexual assault as a plot point, like a major plot point. And it's full of that. And if that if that triggers you, as as it certainly will, uh, this may not be the film for you. But if you can get past that, I think this is a great movie and really has some cool, cool world building. Does it make a whole lot of sense? Not always. Um, but I really do like it. So I, I'm curious to see what you guys feel about because I knew this was sort of a chancy thing. 
people could have absolutely valid reasons for disliking this film. So I'm, inter- I'm very interested to hear what you thought about it. Ah, cool. Um, I'm glad you picked it, actually. So mm-hmm. let's hear from uh, Chris from Cleveland next. So this is the first good. <laughs> this is the first time I've seen this movie. And um, okay, so preface this by saying, do not watch this movie around anyone that you're going to be embarrassed about watch AD or sex or any of that stuff around. Like, because really this whole movie is about sex. It's, it's all sexually related. There's like sexual undertones, even when there's not out sex or rape or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> said, I, I, I love this movie. I think it was amazing. I, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, Bill kind of hyped. As I thought it was going to be worse than what it was, if I'm being honest. Okay, so my expectations were of a certain level and that it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. So that's good. Um, <clears throat> I love the story. I mean, like, Bill, about if you don't know what, it, it totally makes sense. It's so obvious. Like, there's two worlds, human world, the demon world. And they're trying to coexist, but they're actually rebels on the demon side that don't want that this peace to exist. So they're about to renew the treaty and they're trying to stop it. But it, it goes a little further than that. But I won't, I don't want to spoil actually, because you, because I feel like that is a big point to the whole um, <clears throat> The eating vagina was one of my favorite things in the whole world. And I was like, oh, it reminds me of teeth. Um, it's, it's, I love demons, the different types of demons. They're all different and they have different little, now there's, the characters are funny. They're weird. It's, this movie is, is kind of a trip, but, and I would love to see this live action, but there's just no way CGI. And I don't think that would be as good, you know? I mean, because some of the, like, I love, like, these little eyeballs that can look, like, there's some really cool things. Um, I loved it. I enjoyed the entire move from beginning to end. So, yeah. I liked it. Good. I think well, y'all did, too. I, I think everyone I here did. You were the one I was most worried about. Not because I, I thought you would like it, but I thought if she doesn't like it, She's gonna, you know, be upset, and I, I would never want to. Why? Oh God! Well, you never know. Listen, listen. This movie's got. You know got what? A few you things. didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, you just make it. Okay, so Chan Hunt, how about you? What did you? Had you seen this before? Oh yeah, a yeah, bunch okay. of times. Yeah, okay. Uh, I figured. Yeah. yeah, he's a perv. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a bigger. Anime fan. Uh, I'm bigger. Uh, Ova, as, as they used to call them, original video animation, they used to call them. Um, my my experience with it pretty much uh, mirrors Bill's. I I picked these old VHS tapes, bootlegs up at, at a convention because I had, Akira was the first uh, type of these movies. So after I saw Akira, I, I went for a deep dive into Japanese animation and um, I, Wicked City was was my next one. Uh, oh my gosh! And I, I I took it home and I watched it, and it was the same thing. No, no English subtitles at the time. So there was a, there was a lot of stuff um, in there. I could barely you could barely make out the plot, what was going on uh, without that. But I just thought it was the coolest thing I had ever seen. Again, I, I was thinking this is this is the thing this is this is dark city this is blade runner this is all these uh, weird movies combined uh there's a lot of, of that kind of stuff in here um a lot of deviant sex lot lots of it um and lots of stuff that uh teenage boys like myself at the time were like this is cool this is awesome type stuff you know and so it was years later that I finally found it on DVD and um, uh, dubbed with, in English. And, you know, the plot became a little more clear to me. And I just appreciated it all the more with the, the Black Guard 
and and all that stuff that you find out that you can't really find out without the, the uh, subtitles and everything. Um, but I, I found out from watching it now, it's been quite a few years now since I've seen it now, but um, I did find myself having a problem with, and, and, and not to pick this movie out for this, but because a lot of, 80s exploitation and horror did did the same thing where the sexual assault or rape is happening and it just looks they make it look like oh the woman's just in ecstasy it's yeah. over it right. and and right. i i <clears throat> detest that uh, yeah to the to the bottom of my black little heart i hate that so much um but it, that's a lot of movies did that at the time and and um and it's not a big, huge problem with me. It's still one of my favorite um, Japanese animations. And um, I wish it would have went further um, and had more sequels to it. I really do. Um, but the animation is awesome. The characters were just out of this world. Uh, cool. Even uh, little Giuseppe, uh, the mummified looking uh, little <laughs> person there. He was just... Uh, it was all great and cool. I, and I still, aside from that one little point, I, I I still enjoy it immensely. And it is one of the most, it's one of the legendary uh, OVAs uh, of, of the time that came out around that time. So, Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't know anything about this. I, I'm brand new to anime. I think Akira is probably the first one I watched from beginning to end. So... Uh, this was fun. It's all it's beautiful, great color palettes, great creatures, great imagination. Uh, a lot of the stuff like what you talked about, Crystal, the uh, vagina dentata. I guess it's actually it's, <laughs> yeah, it's like a thing yeah. now. Uh, but anyway, uh, that was the director's idea. It wasn't in the original book, uh, so it's it's just got a lot of good stuff. <clears throat> If a normal person watched this, I think they would be disgusted. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. 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 I don't yeah. think horror fans. Uh, it's, you know, it's not going to be all that different. It is. Uh, I also found out somewhere along the line that the the director was a Lovecraft fan, and that's not surprising. Yeah. Oh, that's surprising that makes sense. So, mm -hmm. um, anyway, I I enjoyed the heck out of it, uh, to the point of mm. I'll, I'll just go talk about this now. I feel bad because I, I didn't buy the Chud Blu-ray. So <laughs> I, bought, I bought the Blu-ray for this. And what's really cool about it is, at least from my point of view, well, it's got all three of the versions of it. So there's Japanese with subtitles, there's the American dubbing, and then there's the, that was done by Streamline, I believe, and then the English dubbing that was Manga UK. So uh, three different versions. The uh, One of the things that's really cool is it has storyboard it's got a section where it shows storyboards and the actual scenes from the movie side by side and holy crap if there's a storyboard that's a scene in the movie it that's a shot in the movie uh, i couldn't believe it it was just like oh that's shot cool. for shot you know and knowing that the director <clears throat> did almost all of that i guess that kind of explains it um but i i was really found that very interesting so anyway great and I like the ending too. I thought the ending was yeah. yeah. It, well, I'm glad you all liked it. That's a little kind of a twist. Mind. So I'm I'm totally with Chad. I mean, there's even a line in the movie where uh, I believe uh, our lead female Machia is being raped, and the guy says something like, "Oh, your body wants more, even though your mind oh, yeah. or something." Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it was so just a big warning on that there are yeah. rape scenes and they're not uh I... it's it's confusing because they are portrayed as as something bad is happening but yeah the reactions of the characters is not consistent with that you right. can argue right. that demons don't there's differences in how things are but that's just justifying what it is yeah they <laughs> and this is a thing if you get into japanese exploitation films you know, you you gotta you gotta pick your pick your poison because boy, that shows up a lot, even mm -hmm. in samurai yes. movies or something. Um, 
it's it's yeah it's just not the way well, you're used to seeing it i mean even in shaw brothers what was it uh oily mm -hmm. maniac there's a there's a bunch of rape scenes in yeah. that you know it's just it's just sort of uh but they they go all out for it uh the spider woman also uh the the, the spinneret is in her yeah. vagina that <laughs> Well, that, <laughs> I'll say yeah, that is that is one of the unique things about this film. If you watch some of the other little more extreme, <clears throat> they come up with every possible horrifying version of male genitalia that you could ever imagine, and a bunch of stuff you could not imagine. Mm -hmm. And in this one, it's a lot more female centric. Oh, it's definitely yeah, which is interesting. It's no less horrifying, but it's it's interesting. Well, let's move on to uh, this segment that we uh -oh. call oh, Egg Lines with Chad. The best. Um, that's it? Yeah. Yep, that's it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. <laughs> Just one time on I finally remember to turn the loop off. And, uh, you know, you know. Usually I got to wait for the end of... Da, 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 I think the last one. Uh, All right. Um, and by the by, the end of these taglines, you'll mm -hmm. you'll have a pretty good idea what the plot of the movie is. I think. <laughs> I feel like this is the whole novel written down. Here. It is yeah. just about. Okay. The taglines for Wicked City are as follows. Tagline number one. Something wicked this way comes. Oh, okay. I mean, Rip sure, off. okay. That's yeah, cool. it is, but I, I, I like it. It's got a kind of a double entendre <clears throat> in there too, if you think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Take on number two. With the fate of the world lying in the balance, his task is simple: protect a man's life for twenty-four hours. Thrust into a world of supernatural treachery, his only hope. That his new partner is as good as she looks. Not sexist at all. No. It's also a synopsis, not a tagline. Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. Well, he's a he's a he's a kind of a hunk too, it, so it's it's sexist all the way around. Yeah, but it's not yeah. gonna fit on a VHS box. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Top agents from opposite worlds. They're the last defense against the anarchy of the black world. A little racist, but otherwise that's pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They. I don't think there's. Was it ever called the Black World in the movie? They're called the Black mm -hmm. Guard, but they were called the Black World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think in the dubbing I saw it was. Yeah, it was. They'll fix that Thank if you. they ever remake it. Mm -hmm. uh, next one is uh, the twisted beings from the other side will do anything to stop them. Ooh. Okay, that's oh, fair ooh. enough. Yeah, Some... okay. Here's another one. <laughs> Horrible things that make the city tremble, the bewitching, voluptuous women of the demon world, the spirit of the black guard explodes, the attraction between man and woman, <laughs> the complete visualization of Kikuchi's world. Kikuchi. <laughs> A lot of word solid there, I guess. Yeah, you got to yeah. know who and, Kikuchi and, is. Speaking of which, he had like a, a eleven novel series of mm -hmm. the Black Guard. In fact, he was like prolific as crap. There's a bunch of uh, anime, or a bunch of book series that he wrote that have animes based on at least some of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. Meet the Beatles. I mean the Black Guard. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Just meet the black guard. Yeah, that is. How are you doing, black guard? How's the wife and kids? Really good shoe. Since ancient times, a treaty has been kept between the human and the demon worlds in order to preserve a peaceful coexistence. That peace has been protected through the years by the efforts of certain warriors. Those warriors are called the black guard. These can't be taglines. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why right. this can't be tagline. You could have trimmed that half, and it would have been good. <laughs> somebody, somebody put synopses in the in the tagline yeah. category here. All right, the third one from the bottom. Wow, <laughs> from Horror Master Hideyuki Kikuchi. 
<laughs> and acclaimed director <laughs> Yoshiaki Kawajiri. <clears throat> That's it? I just like saying Kikuchi. Yeah, you do. Kikuchi, I mean, obviously. Kikuchi. Kikuchi. I am the Eggman. Kikuchi. Kikuchi. Right. Anyway. The horror classic from Madhouse. That's not a tagline. No. That's no. not a tagline. When desire turns deadly, there's no place to hide. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. All right. See, I'm, I mean, I'm not. I'm going to start. Yeah. Not, I'm not taking the blame for any of these. These no, are. For... <laughs> Jeff no, picks you... these taglines out. You know, for okay. a movie that was never actually <clears throat> released in theaters, that's like the most taglines we've ever had. I know. I, know. Seems the good uh, I mean, we'll say, too. though, they're better than a lot of the American movies. Let's uh, just be like, That's a low bar. Mm, yeah. But I think. Yeah, very. <laughs> pretty good idea what's going on. We got to protect somebody for 24 hours. Supernatural treachery. Uh, mm. Bewitching, voluptuous women of the demon world. Anyway, cool, 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 cool. <laughs> we will move on from there. And that's been Taglines Tag with Chad. <laughs> okay. I turned off the I turned the loop back on just for you, Chad. Yeah. Oh, oh, you shouldn't have. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably right. You really right. shouldn't have. <laughs> All right, so uh, I don't know. What do you guys want to talk about? Uh, you said something, Crystal. I think there was a live version of this there in like was. 1992. There was? Yes. Okay, but, so look. But everything's different about it. I, there, It has nothing. Has yeah, just it the, has the, to be. The How barest, would they pull this barest off? barest plot in common. It looks like it was shot on a camcorder, at least the version I saw. It just looked cheap with a lot of color. It's not good. It's 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 not a patch on the ass of the anime. Mm. I'd like yeah, to see I mean, a live this, action. This movie but... would cost a fortune. This movie would cost a fortune to make properly. Yeah. Like a fortune. If to do it right. Not well, to mention we... it would be a CGI <clears throat> test. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, we yeah. saw, uh, Bill mentioned that we saw real obvious callbacks to uh, The Thing. John Carpenter's The Thing. Mm -hmm. with, with the head with the legs coming out of it. Right. And what else was I thinking? The one creature, and you've got a picture of it here bill but uh it reminds me of the werewolf transformations in the company of wolves yeah where oh, the, sound, mouth, the mouth. sound comes out of the guy's yeah. mouth mm -hmm. you know it looks that's true um not that you know anything there i remember when i first watched this i was thinking to myself boy john carpenter's the thing was a much bigger hit in japan than it was here because they have completely embraced the vibe i, I realized this was the first Hmm. anime modern anime feature film i ever saw <clears throat> it cut and this sort of set me hmm. into what i thought they were going to be like and then i started renting more and more and they were nothing like this so it's just <laughs> like pure <laughs> luck that i happened to catch this one first probably well, that, not the way to do it that spider girl shot i mean yeah. we're, we're seeing uh you know demon human sex and i i think it's actually <laughs> like five minutes from the start of the movie Oh yeah, it's like they, you're not going to get lulled into <laughs> mm -mm. complacency or anything. And boom! Oh, that's what this movie is. And yeah. we have the the toothy the toothy vagina and the uh, uh, anyway. sounds like a Bond girl. Yeah. Toothy yeah. vagina. Yeah. Toothy vagina. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yep. It absolutely does. Mm -hmm. So now, anyway. I will I will say this. Um, I still prefer the Japanese version with subtitles. I think yeah. the the voice acting on mm -hmm. that, even yeah. though I can't, you know, it, uh, it's always been confusing when I watch like a, mm -hmm. a film that's in the original language. I think the actors are acting well. Now, Toshiro Mifune seems really convincing, but since I don't understand mm -hmm. a single word he's saying, for all I know, he's saying his voice in a way that the Japanese would find, you know, awkward maybe he's doing like christopher walken delivery or he's doing a J jerry lewis accent mm -hmm. i don't know but it seemed to me reading it and i've never had trouble reading subtitles and watching a film at the same time after a while i forget that it's even in a foreign language it just mm -hmm. i remember it mm -hmm. as i'm saying it well, like, your, like your it. brain your brain starts to hear yeah the voice 
saying those words. See it you know? with it. Yep. Yeah. To me, anyway, it does. Whereas I have found the English dubbing, at least the version I saw this time, I find it kind of flat and not terribly inspired. That they were just sort of reading their lines and I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. I liked it. I didn't have a problem with it, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Uh... I thought it was fun, cute, but. About the only dubbing that I've gotten used to, and maybe it's just because I grew up on them, are spaghetti westerns. Uh, That's like yeah. the, the only ones that I watch, and it doesn't seem really weird. Mm. Any other time when I watch them, even like Italian, like Giallo or something, uh, yeah, it kind of depends. Yeah, some of, well, those are, some of those are okay, too. Uh, you have to really... If you want to do a good job, you have to get into the vibe of the movie and the feel mm -hmm. yeah. and put your like real actors do when, when they're reading a the script. You know, they emote and they, you know, yeah. there's like like Bill said, these feel like and it always feels like they're just reading the lines where the Japanese language, there's a lot of emotion and, 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 and an emphasis <laughs> on, on certain words and stuff. They got that, Giuseppe right. Giuseppe was, yeah, was, yeah, that's, was yeah. right. And yeah. maybe maybe because the other characters, Maki and Taki, are very, you know, they don't wear their hearts on their sleeves. They're cool. They're really mm -hmm. cool. And yeah. so yeah, they're like, not... why wouldn't he tell her he loved her? Because obviously he right. I don't get yeah. it. Well, well he's, can you he's explain supposed that? to fight the, these well, he was, things you know, for years, and so now he's supposed to trust one. And even appliance though he sales, a, appliance salesman by day, blackguard by night. Right. I, think, I mean, he's he's always kept himself, yeah. you know, separate from from everyone, because in a job like that, anyone that you care about is just right. a liability. They're just one more thing that the bad guys can hold over you. But but that I mean, that was a weird bit in that he, he says that and you're like, oh, man, dick move, Taki. And then he kind of goes mm -hmm. right back. He reverses right. himself and like, oh, OK, well. Still, it says what he needs to protect. I don't, yeah, it's kidding. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, the way they, the writing of that. Well, I think not just the acting, but also the translation is a big thing. And I think sometimes mm -hmm. if the translation doesn't carry the same spirit, then it makes it tough on the actor. Sometimes that, just a single word can change things. When I saw the difference between the international dubbing and the U.S. dubbing of Let the Right One In, I was appalled. Mm -hmm. Just again, it, some of it was just single words, but those words meant something. Um, right, I, and I think right. looking at the look, and I, again, I'm trusting the skills of the person doing the subtitles, but looking at the subtitled version, it just seemed more adult, written at a higher level than the more simplistic um, <laughs> stuff there. Well, I did notice at least the ones that I was watching, they you could not turn on the subtitles. When you were watching the dub version, mm. I I couldn't. Anyway. Interesting. Uh, so, you know, we've had that happen before, where you turn the subtitles on, and they don't match the dubbing. Oh yeah. So try Mister Vampire someday, and, and yeah. um, it's it's a hoot. All right. Um, seemed like there was something else there, but let's let's take a look at what uh, Bill's come up with because, you know. You look far and wide for this, and this is it. This is the poster. This is every almost every yep. DVD and Blu-ray and VHS cover. Understandably, yeah. there's a limited number of stills that um, they have out there that you can probably show. Um, and I think this gives the vibe. It gives that that kind of oh yeah color palette <clears throat> and. Yeah, it's it was intriguing, intriguing enough for me to pick it up. That's for sure. So yeah. And by the way, uh, watch out, folks. There is a, there is a TV show called Wicked City that I think just got came. Yeah, that has nothing. It's nothing yeah, to it's do. Nothing with this. nothing to do with this. Yeah, it's like witches, I think, or something. Mm. Um, all righty. Well, and the director. So I believe this was his first directing effort. Wicked. I City. think it was his first feature film. I think he did yeah. some TV before this <laughs> well, and in fact this was supposed to be like a 30 minute deal to start with right and he, he and, and yeah the producers were so favorable about it they gave him the extra money to do that is demon city part of this is this i thought so but no else? no it's it's, it's 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 got similar it's vibes weird. it's not nearly as as sexually uh out there 
Um, okay. Ninja, Ninja Scroll, Scroll is, a is a huge hit. Oh my gosh, it's a fantastic, fantastic animation. So is Vampire Hunter D. Yeah. Now this is Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. Bloodlust. It's a sequel mm-hmm. to the first one. We'll have mm-hmm. to do the first one sometime because I, I love that movie. Yes. Um, I haven't seen Bloodlust, but I'll have to give it a shot. I own Bloodlust. It's very, very good. Mm-hmm. Very good sequel to uh, the original. But I think Ninja Scroll is the one that he's most known for because that mm-hmm. one has a fanatically loyal following. Mm-hmm. Well, I saw something, or uh, I saw mm-hmm. something somewhere they were talking about. He's <clears throat> Kawajiri is known as mm-hmm. having this being real strong in these blue palettes with con- contrasting mm-hmm. reds. But they also said part of it was the color transfer process created some of the richness of those blues that wasn't the original colors uh, i like it it gives it a very film I do too. I do too. Thing. Mm-hmm. um i'm gonna I, that's, i'm gonna have to check some more of these out yeah i say this every time but yeah. tubi has a lot of them on there yeah that's yeah. good tubi has a lot of them. i was well, impressed we, that tubi had this on it quite frankly yeah. i haven't searched them but when we were getting ready to do this and I was looking around I found two anime streaming services that I didn't know about before. One of them is Retro Crush which has some free content with ads and some other content that you got to subscribe for and then High Dive was the other one and that is subscription only but they both had this movie. Um, So maybe the, the anime fans out there probably already know about these but if you don't, check them out. Um see what else did we have here mm. so our our lead hunk Taki which is Taki's kind of a lot it. like a bond isn't he mm-hmm. yeah. yeah looks like a big <clears throat> shooter worked out <laughs> is it, the, the gun is strange <laughs> yeah the gun is causes a... almost as much damage to him as it does to the bad guys mm-hmm. well that was the ending shot I think that yeah. That was yeah. a, like Bill said. That was a great ending. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So there's a lot we don't know about this guy, but he's good at his job, and the ladies love him. <clears throat> he got a big gun. It's not always clear exactly. Apparently, the old man does too. Uh, <laughs> that's what they say. Yeah. He's got something. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it's. <laughs> It's not always apparent what their different abilities are. Mm-hmm. So we, I, I, like when the demons come after him, some of the stuff seems unbeatable. But yet, <clears throat> right. after fighting him for a while, he said suddenly something happens, and I guess we find out later that was Giuseppe that was saving yeah, yeah. him a lot of times. Mm-hmm. If yeah, it yeah. wasn't the gun, it was probably just. But okay, but then I did the spider person or whatever go why i don't understand like why was she surprised that she got got yeah by the psychic stuff well, they thought he was dead right I th- oh yeah uh, when he went into the black is that what that was about Maybe. Yeah. I, I, i'm with crystal i thought it seemed to infer that she was being betrayed by her own side yeah or something. exactly that's what it felt like to me i was like whoa mm. okay it, that's how it cross, but yeah. <clears throat> I'm not sure if that was all I could think of. Like that. that had to hurt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. Well, you know, we've talked about her and the vagina dentata. <laughs> I have no idea what you call vagina torsata or whatever that was. <laughs> the, that woman's whole oh, torso other was a big yeah. giant. Vagina. Oh, that yeah. was just. <laughs> I mean, there's so much stuff in here. The, the, uh, well, you got some pictures later. I should keep yeah. watching until we get there. Um, so let's take a look at Taki, or Maki, I should say. I love Maki. Maki. First of all. Me too. I think she's she's absolutely gorgeous. And she reminds me, there was an artist. Was his name Ray Nagel? Roy Nagel? He, he did a lot of stuff for Playboy. It was just this very stylistic, ebony white characters with dark hair and just look she looks like she walked off an album cover and that's a cool yeah. power these late i don't know if they're laser or super sharp or whatever these fingernails that she can mm-hmm. 
It's a little bit of Wolverine. A little... Oh, they did have some sort of. She she had him in that. Yeah. Gooby bitch. It, and then she just like <laughs> sent, sent something through, and it's like that's what killed her. Now I don't know what to call it. <laughs> that gooby. <Yeah. laughs> like... She turned and, and, to goo, all right, didn't she? You know, she, she's got yeah. this androgynous thing going, but then at the end, mm -hmm. she's just like an angel. She's just yeah. flowing white gowns and everything. And that's, so, that's what was she sequence. supposed to become? She's obviously supposed to. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting. She's I'm getting like chills. the. the, the... Uh, she, <clears throat> she's supposed to. You know, like, you know, she's supposed to, you know, transform into something else. And I guess that's because she's pregnant, yeah. mm -hmm. carrying the child. Between her and the baby, the powers increased into she's whatever become, was she was yeah. doing at the end. Yeah, She's become the Madonna for this new that, yeah. life that true. will unite the two worlds together. So, yeah. and, and the considering... Twist, uh, the I'm sorry, Bill. Go no, ahead. no, I was just going to say, considering she's only, she's only been pregnant for uh, an hour or so, and already she's been transformed to this. You don't know how thing. fast they're, what their gestation but is. But you got to think, this kid is going to be, <clears throat> yikes, you know, the, the power that this, mm -hmm. this uh, child would have must be off the charts. Oh, wow. We totally did that. Gave some stuff away. Yeah, you thinking know. Thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they st still, still don't understand. I, I feel like that's where they were headed when, mm. when, <clears throat> sorry, when they mentioned the genetic stuff. And so now it all makes sense. See, the story makes sense. Like clearly right. she had sex with him so she could get his sperm so they could check his DNA. So, you know. Mm -hmm. The spider woman. Yeah. 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 Because she now, said, course, oh, it's all right. I got what I need. And she did. Right. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, the, the whole thing is, it's kind of like really that's that's what they need to do so why didn't they just introduce these two characters and like we got a room over here with some uh you know good music and some soft candlelight go that's at not it the way things were no Bill. it's not because no he he said specifically yeah, yeah he said specifically that's for right. her to fully transfigure whatever uh, that they had to have a soul ball basically and that does make sense because, you know these things are not just physical entities they're spiritual entities too there's there's a lot well, of and that, going on but i the demons miss i think that's what the demons are missing i don't think they have as much of that mm -hmm. emotional soul and that her crying was such right. a big deal that is a big deal so this is gonna be like it's it's like they're the humans are introducing the emotional to the demons, which is kind of I think this story awesome. Mm -hmm. Sex, all the sex and rapey stuff aside, I love the story. You know, yeah. like it's so wild, and I think it's a great concept. It's really cool. I and, like and the idea it, of it. It does. It does. <laughs> It does make all this gratuitous and often awful sexual stuff make some sense in that the only truly tender moment in the movie, the only the only really uplifting sexual moment is the two of them at the end where everything else has been violence and, and force and trying to exert power over someone here was too yeah. mutual. And the result of that is the savior of the world, I guess. And you know what? I'm glad there wasn't a sequel because... I love Japan. I love the Japanese, but uh, they tend to take. Okay, that was a great story. Well, here's the sequel, and everything goes straight to hell. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm like, uh, so I'm I'm happy to think these two, everything worked out. They lived happily ever after, and their kid because was a real world beater, without literally yep. beating the world to death, which is what would probably happen in the end. I, I I think they had the the next generation Giuseppe. Oh God, can you imagine? <laughs> Speaking of which. Yeah, there he is. Okay. So when I first saw this, I couldn't figure out. I was like, I thought, well, he's got to be from the demon world. Because yeah, because look at anyone, him. Look he's at like him. 200 years old, though. But no, like, apparently that's... he just, he's a wizard. He's old. And if you live to be 200, your head mm -hmm. turns into basically a scrotum. Yeah. Um, well, he was he was supposed to have these, what do they call them? Vestigial <laughs> horns. Starting, you know, starting. That's yeah. what was in the book, and I, I need to uh, correct what I said. The not the director, but the uh, writer of the oh. books was a big Lovecraft fan. Oh, okay. So, so actually, I would love to kind of read the Ben because why is he getting horns? It was just who. It's Japanese. It was not explained. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they do a lot of stuff that doesn't necessarily would make make sense to us, but they just make Maybe. stuff up and they go with it. Maybe that's you know? what they think Italians look like. Who knows? I mean, but he, <laughs> he's what's the it, most. What's that one we did on uh, Classic Era, Chad? Oh. Yokai Monsters. Oh, Lots yeah. of Yokai oh, yeah. Monsters if you want to see something that makes no sense at all. Well, that's in some movies, that's the cool thing about. Uh, it's folk tales it's, and things yeah, from their past. It's just they've adapted, the craziest right? stuff that you would yeah. not. It's just they they make up something and it doesn't matter if it makes sense or not. They just they just go with it, and that's I, I find that pretty cool. It doesn't have to make sense. Yeah. To them, you know. Well, they, fair enough. And they make this character seem like he's mm -hmm. just like he's just the, uh, you know, the two hundred year old uh, master guy. diplomat that has yeah. to <laughs> that, that they need to be there um, to sign that's... the agreement. But yeah, that's that's what he <clears> acts like. Uh, and it turns out that's not it at all, that they don't really, signing the agreement is sort of their code name for Maki and Taki getting it on and consummating their relationship. Um, Which it, it flipped it over that he was protecting them the whole time, not them. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Taki, Maki, I just want to say, he was doing a shit job when it comes to uh, yeah. uh, Maki, because she wasn't that well protected. But I guess that was necessary for her to be put into perils that Taki would go to protect her. And, yeah. Well, why would he sneak out though and leave him unprotected? No, it makes no sense. Come go on. visit. Well, this maybe lady he the wanted them to. That gooby maybe bitch he, at the well, bottom. Yeah. I think the <laughs> truth is he uh, he was just a horny bastard, but also <laughs> that I think he probably wanted to give him something to be alone. Maybe mm. I don't know. Mm. Well, he said maybe. somewhere toward the end that um, he was mm. trying his best to spark their them to be intimate i guess that's why he was reading dirty magazines yeah. and having the guy look at it <laughs> right and that oh of, yeah oh look at this one here she's got them you know yeah that's that's how I you mean, do it, he, <clears throat> he seemed like he was all about coming on to her in the back seat too I mean, right yeah well yeah Rubbing i think he, leg and everything and, ugh, actually all i'm yeah. thinking about is him like with that with the parasite thing he's like well i definitely got something here what? Mm -hmm. yeah, well yeah. i pretty much had a dirty old man voice too from in all right. three versions yeah. <laughs> japanese yeah. even in the japanese version he sounds like the same yeah. person doing the yeah. voice it's like yeah but that's well, kind of the this... standard in anime is the the horny old monk or the horny old it's like yeah. old and horny mm -hmm. and small <laughs> uh so this character mr shadow I, I, yeah, nothing too phallic pretty, about that. Yeah. Well, and it, just a no, bunch of stones. Yeah. So let's talk about this. There was we <clears> have <throat> a statue of the Virgin Mary in a church that all mm. these tentacles come out of its. They come out of its mouth or its head or what? Are they, just it's in place. Head, like the head exploded. Yeah. And... yeah. Again, like you said, Jeff, the powers the powers are whatever they needed to be. Yeah. yeah, it's like okay, like like Maki's got her magic fingernails, but when she needs to, she can also make your hair whip around your throat and choke you. Mm -hmm. So you know, whatever. It's whatever they think's cool. You know, yeah, that would look yeah. cool if her hair whipped around and choked the guy. Then. So that, that's and it was it. cool. Mm -hmm. it was I mean, for cool. all we know, Maki looks nothing like she does. She may have a completely different persona, mm -hmm. and she just picked the, oh, the version a, that would look the best to Taki. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure physical manifestations have any rules in the demon world. Or when they come here, it doesn't sure doesn't seem to. So besides the Virgin Mary, this shot here in the bottom, we also have a shot where uh, he gets a cross embedded in his head. Yeah, a pretty that big cross embedded in his head. Um, and I don't know why it just popped in my head. This isn't in this scene at all, but there's that scene where. They're driving their car along, uh, Taki and, and Maki and, and there's this love song playing, and then they drive into a tunnel. Yeah. yeah. And, and then, mm -hmm. and then, now, they what do you think? What do you think they were trying to symbolize? Like goofy stuff yeah. comes out of which is, yeah. turns out to be webs from the Spider Woman, I guess, but it's yeah. still just. What's a metaphor? I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ask your mom, kids. She'll explain it to you. So, 
And see that from Carnage. Uh, yeah. Yes, Venom. Oh, I love that punch. Yeah, that's a that's a <clears throat> punch right there. He doesn't even need mm. his big old gun if he can just punch right through your head like a hollow pumpkin. Mm -hmm. True that. Yeah. And then there was the uh, I don't remember if it was that creature or where they came from. I think it was from the head. But these tentacles with the eyeballs on the end that had mouths in them that had teeth yeah. in them too. Yeah. 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 So, Every piece you blow off comes back. Yeah, like you had to, you had to kill every single molecule or cell of this one guy, right? Or entity, Which whatever is it was. Kind of cool. That's what he yeah. says, but then Maki just slices him in half, but, and that's the end. But she's something new. She's super. But yeah, you yeah. know what? I guess the truth is, we still don't know if he's dead. Really, <clears throat> all they needed was enough time to have a baby. I guess, sign that peace treaty, right? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Really, ultimately, like, what's the goal? Because once the treaty you know, is signed, they could probably be punished for whatever you, <clears throat> if you could prove it. I mean, you know. So, hmm. yeah. So she ends up with she has to go through all these trials and tribulations to gain. This is going to sound really bad. To gain the ultimate power of motherhood. Mm -hmm. And that's when she be, is able to like start just kind of walking through the glowing light. And yeah. Anyway. That thing on the bottom, that's the thing I was talking about, where it comes out of his mouth. Yeah. And it kind of reminded mm -hmm. me of uh, <clears throat> like some wolves. kind of weird combination of a Venus flytrap. Uh, this wanted me to see uh, an animated version of John Carpenter's The Thing mm -hmm. so bad when, I, was, yeah. when yeah. I first saw this, yeah. Yeah, I tried to find a picture of that walking mm -hmm. head, but I couldn't. It's uh, Strangely enough, with the Blu-ray out there, and it's a good quality Blu-ray, it's hard to find uh, yeah, they just quality pictures of certain scenes. I mean, not necessarily just the... the uh, the lurid ones, even even some of the other. Uh, and then you've got, I guess, you Deviant label this sex. one weird sex. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. It's and the uh, weirdest boy. one for me. I mean, besides the spider, I mean, there's the, the spider woman with the vagina. Venti I keep bringing that up. It's right. Like I'm sure do. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> and, then there's, <laughs> and then there's a woman with a vagina and the, her whole torso is a big As vagina. Crystal called her, goopy bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then there's that. Yeah. She's... And then there's the guy. Uh, is it is it Mr. Shadow that has a long? What's the thing that that wraps itself around <clears throat> the guy and mm -hmm. then sticks it? Its tongue comes out. Of, one tentacle. Oh tongue yeah. Comes out. <laughs> that was, that that was the uh, yeah. worm, right? The parasite. Yeah, yeah that yeah, was that the most, little worm thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the most disturbing sequence, right there. Yeah. They could have, uh, they could have cut a little of that out. Yeah. And it was hard, it was hard to figure was out what like... was going on because it was like her body was transforming. <clears throat> At right. the same time, she's being lifted up. So I, I wasn't exactly sure. Of yeah, there's a worm thing got into her, and then it yeah. looked like it was transforming her body, but then it turned into two, anyway, two separate ones. Yeah. All righty. The way, the way they make that spider lady walk, the first time so I saw cool. that, I was like, man, that awesome. is awesome. Yeah. It was so creepy and so, so cool. At the same well, time. and the way she wrapped herself around him in bed, too, I, mm -hmm. I just. Yeah. And that, that didn't freak so me scary. out as much as when she got out of bed like that and started walking around really yeah. fast like a spider. Mm -hmm. That yeah. is the one part that was kind of kept in the uh, live action version, and it's awful. It's just she's got big prosthetic floppy arms on and just waving oh, them about. No. Yeah, didn't work. <coughs> so one of the things I thought was really cool about this is the way that he inserts lighting into the animation itself you know how he depicts the lighting of the scene because mm -hmm. there's scenes where uh the, the characters are backed by uh like venetian blinds and it's super yeah. bright and glowing there's actual like uh what do you call it uh lens flare mm -hmm. in a couple of weird oh, yeah. shots but they do, this, they do that in a lot of it. Lens flare. Mm -hmm. that is really cool um mm. i don't know i just i i was impressed by that plus Kind of like Akira, I guess, in that he shot it like you would shoot a live action movie, you know. Right. That's the camera a lot of times comes into one scene and then pans down to the center yeah. of attention. Yeah, there's a lot of style. I mean, this is this is not top level animation in terms of things moving, but when you can't do that, you can 
<coughs> excuse me, make up for with style, like the, just the scene in the airport where they have the face off, Taki facing the two guys that are there to kill him. And everyone's just standing there waiting for someone to make a move. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this airplane appears and, you know, takes over the whole background. It's freaking cool. It's yeah. really, really yeah. awesome. You know, that, that you know that, pull off live action. That whole scene reminded me of the uh, chase in Bullet on the runway. Mm. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, version. yeah. Mm -hmm. He's getting he's chasing somebody across a, a runway um, and they're running like between the air. The airplane's moving and they make it so it looks like he's running between the tires and stuff or between the landing gear. Um, that was that was pretty cool. So yeah, I and this was done back when CGI really no wasn't used at all for, for things like this. And it was so I, it, this period of this period of uh, the OVA, the Japanese animation was just mind blowingly. Uh, it was incredible uh, pieces of art that um, that you don't you just don't you don't see this anymore really. Everything's yeah. computer animated and, right, right. and looks like so, Smurfs and you know that kind of thing. So Chad, does uh, Ova original video animation does that mm -hmm. that mean it hasn't already been in a manga or an anime before? It, it just or? means that it's an original piece it's an original uh movie it didn't go to theaters uh, um i think it, i think they did go to theaters oh. but but i think it was just <clears throat> um i don't know i guess it's because akira is based on a series of graphic novels it was called an ova okay uh, ninja scroll all those were called ovas back then and um instead of saying japanese animation they, they just came up mm. with that name Huh. Um, Interesting. So, because yeah. I, I was thinking it was like these were based on written books. This some was, were, some were. This was, but... and so then I'm thinking, well, there's no other graphic version of this, so this was the original. <coughs> but you're saying it. Uh, some of them were based on manga. Yeah, some of them were based on manga, them. but they were still called original video okay. animations. Okay. Uh, me, if it would have been original books, that would have been one thing, but I think they just went with that name for some reason. And I don't know if that's a Japanese thing or if it was an American thing when they came out. Well, one other thing that I saw that I thought was interesting was the uh, director was a big fan. This time I got it right. The director was a big fan of American Westerns. And okay. so when you watch <clears throat> these, it's it's not always, but most of the time, it's a one-on-one -on -one battle, mm -hmm. you know? So he did have the two guys chasing him in the airport, but he was fighting them mostly one-on-one, -on -one, I guess. Uh, but most of the time it's a one-on-one -on -one thing to mimic sort of the idea of the gunfighter or the or high noon kind of situation. But at least dub it right. I, I mean, he just comes in when he saves her as she's being assaulted and he's like, ha ha, so I see you're being raped. And you looks like you like it. Ha ha ha. And I'm going to yeah. kill you now, bad guy. You know, it just <laughs> it takes some of that dubbing takes a, a yeah. dramatic or an impactful yes. moment and just makes mush out of it. There was a couple of things like that in the Japanese version, even, but not as bad. Not as bad. But yeah, he always in a good western, the good guy always shows up to save the day and right. And uh, and that's kind of what he did in this. He would always show up to save her and Maki. And uh, but yeah, you, so you can see that Western influence. It was it was almost like <clears throat> a. Uh, it was also at that closing scene, not not the one where he goes back to the black guard, like, but when they're walking out of the church into the glowing daylight and the music's crescendoing, and mm -hmm. I, I'm I. I'm thinking of Scarlet going, and after all, tomorrow is another day. You know, yeah. like the future is upon us, and we've mm. got the anyway. What was I, the I'm name? Like... What, what was the name of the old? A lot of the um, old westerns used to have it. The guys that um, they were guns for hire. It was a uh, uh, like mercenaries. Um, almost, but they were like they were lawmen, but they were like. Um, 
Oh, like, like bounty regulators? hunters? Bounty hunters? Not, not, not regulators, but remember <laughs> Half Gun Will Travel with Richard Boone. Right, Pal right. Paladins. Uh, Paladins basically Paladins. guns for hire. I, I yeah. don't know. But yeah. they a lot of guys did that, you know, the when they had the uh, the, the, the uh, <clears throat> range wars. Yeah, you know, they'd, they'd that's what I the felt like. He was them. like a, almost like yeah. a gun for hire type guy who hunted yeah. guys, hunted, you know. Which is probably things. one reason why the Japanese like these Westerns, because that would be, you know, similar to the uh, Ronin, the yeah. masterless samurai. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. So any final mm -hmm. comments here? Oh, I, I'm glad everyone liked it. I wasn't I wasn't 100 percent sure because it is pretty out there. I think if you. If you're okay with some of the more adult material, this is a really good film. It's got it's one of those things that kind of respects its audience and that there's a lot of back history. I mean, like I, I would have liked to have known who was this guy with the the robot hand that could throw that thing. They seem to know each other, and you know, was this his mentor? There seems to be a lot of like there is a lot of material that could have been mm -hmm. in a sequel or something. So, like Crystal, I am interested in reading them. I wanted to see more of that. It was kind of lost in the yeah animation um, I thought that was pretty cool but i think it's a really cool film okay look it is not laugh crystal said it it is not one you watch with your kids it's not one you show <laughs> no, when, when no. grandma comes over unless she comes over too often you want to make sure she doesn't come over again that mom i'm funny. never getting married <laughs> <laughs> yeah. is that what it's really like i'm not getting married <laughs> yeah i'm but, trying to see here where i saw what guy described it as uh Near pornographic sex and extreme violence, lurid action movie. I'll go yeah, with lurid action. That's fair. Movie. So anyway, um, I mean, it, it was though it's soft core. Yeah. I mean, if we're talking about visuals right. only. Well, <clears throat> yeah, like I won't get too distracted here because we do have a bunch of feedback here. So we're ready to <laughs> ready to move on to that, yeah. everybody. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you picked this, Bill. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Me too. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Um, everybody got the mm. feedback up? Yep, yep. I'm getting there. Yep. So we got some. Feel. We've got some good feedback here first from uh, episode 228, Zombie Jeez Nightmare. Nice. Jeez. And this one's from Brian Smith, our uh, co-podcaster mm. on uh, HNR. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Uh, Chad, you want to take that? Yeah. Uh, Brian W. Smith says of Zombie Nightmare, y'all sat through this without MST3K? Sean Levy of Stranger Things fame. Yep, yep. Yeah. I was shocked when I saw that about Sean Levy, but yeah, mm. we sat through yeah, that. Yeah, so was I. So was MST3K. I. MST3K. Ah, and then uh, uh, Chad White says... I'm probably going to skip this one. LOL. Thanks for the entertaining review. Thumbs up. <laughs> That's what we always used to. I used to always thank them for weeding out the the chat. That's, oh, I don't have to watch that now. Um, and let's see. Tyler Moore. Uh, Bill, you want to read that? This sure. feels like it's right up your alley here. Tyler Moore says, hello, Grew Crew. Great podcast on Zombie Nightmare. I have to give it a watch. It sounds like a must-see. You know what else is a must-see? Frankenstein Island. <laughs> Tyler Moore, don't is you ever write this show again. <clears throat> is that Mikey, something that Jerry was talking about? No, I think that was Mikey okay. Z. This that story. was Mikey oh, Z. Oh, that was. You're I'm right. I'm sure Jerry will chime right. in agree as, as well. As, as, uh, uh, After dropping on the show. You're banned. Yeah. You're banned. Yeah. I, Tyler <laughs> continues. If I subjected myself to cannibal Holocaust because it has historical significance, I must yep. hear your views on Frankenstein Island. That doesn't even make sense. It does make sense, oh, though. It does, does kind of. He's kinda. absolutely correct. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. Just because you suffer yep. doesn't mean, oh, well. Yeah, Vampire's somebody Kiss. Somebody <laughs> suffer, yeah. He keeps on going. <laughs> Vampire's Kiss is a film I've wanted to see for a while. It was a great episode. I love this discussion on a potential 90s decades of horror podcast. I highly recommend Body Parts 1991. Thanks for all the fun shows. Cheers, Tyler. P.S. Frankenstein Island is so bad, I needed cat treats to bribe my cats to get close to the DVD. You have the DVD. That's got, precarious. Actually. If you've got the DVD oh. of Frankenstein <laughs> Island, I'm glad. I'm glad because that. Well, guess what? 
Oh, wow. Maybe that's why he loves it Frank, so much. Because he's got the DVD, so he's catching all the nuances that I apparently have missed all these years. Hey, nuance. Tyler. You know what? We might just be doing Frankenstein I, Island next. Yeah. We no, we're not, because uh -oh. if Santos was we, here, it's he, my would ban choice. he would ban it. It's my choice. <laughs> Uh-oh. It's oh. my choice. It is and it's choice. on and Tubi. I didn't ask you ahead of time. Uh oh uh And oh. it's on Tubi. Uh -oh. no, I'm so, uh, Tyler, <laughs> thanks to you, we're going to watch Frank Island. Everyone That's knows who pick. to blame now. Don't forget, Tyler, yep. don't forget Mikey Z, though. Well, oh. Mikey Z is on the <laughs> permaban list. <laughs> <laughs> Mikey the Speaking best. of which, uh, <clears throat> and let's go. I don't know if I want. I'm going to read this one. Uh, okay. Wicked City. Wow. We got, we got comments on Wicked <laughs> City. Even before. These people are quick. Well, yeah. I put out the, uh, what, like the first of the month, I put out the schedule for what we were doing. So these were comments mm -hmm. on that. Jerry Chandler says, I just want to say I love and respect Bill Mulligan. Uh-oh, that never <laughs> ends well. We have it in writing, though. Uh, yeah. And I may be one of the few who still do after this. <laughs> nah, it's a good choice. Uh, it has its really twisted moments that seem to be re the really in thing in a lot of Japanese horror from across the years. But it's not as bad as the Rape Zombie series. Well, never heard of it. You know about that, Bill? I don't, but I'm afraid to even look. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> grading, grading on a curve, he says. Uh, <clears throat> surprise, you're not getting around to Vampire Hunter D now that you're dipping into the anime world. Yeah, it's the cliche, I guess, but both Vampire Hunter D and Vampire Hunter D Bloodless deserve a look. They do. Plus, well, you might be introducing them to a lot of people, even with the huge rise in the popularity of anime over the last 20 years. Older stuff like uh, that and the D movies and Ninja Scroll and even not so old Jinro, the Wolf Brigade, yeah. seem to fall out of the current pop culture mix. Yeah, we'll get we'll get to them. I'm, I'm not shuffling off this mortal coil tomorrow. I mean, we'll get to these films. Vampire Hunter D is definitely one on the list. Well, and since I... Uh, I hear the word vampire i think it was jerry that did this i actually did watch jesus christ vampire hunter oh i, uh, I think he brought that up <laughs> it reminded me a yeah. lot of uh what the heck was the name of that movie velocipaster yeah is that the name of that yeah 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 uh anyway fair enough all right and then uh <clears throat> jason gilbert i'm gonna let Help you the read irons jason the chud stuff uh Crystal. Jason Gilbert. Oh, okay. Wicked City is great. Vampire Hunter D is a decent inaugural anime film, and Ninja Scroll is just amazing. Of course, if Bill Mulligan hasn't seen Akira yet, he's missing out in a major way. And then Bill responded, uh, we did Akira as our first anime on the podcast. And then for the <laughs> second, I dance on the Razor's Edge, and Razor, Razor's Edge and pick this one. Either my podcast partners say, wow, where has this been all my life? Or they never speak to me again. I, it's a, Sorry, it's kind of 50 50 and vampire <laughs> yeah. hunter d is definitely on the list for future picks if i am ever entrusted with that again yeah so thank you jason uh jason's cool man jason yeah, jason's jason. cool all right so chud uh we got There's so many lot. weird ones here and and i kind of put <laughs> these together i think we have i think we have Dear time God. for this uh <clears throat> i mean i could be fast my, Mikey Z's throwing one out to Chad here, I think. Uh, when Oh, when, shocker. When, when Chud, Chud became, became Chad. Chad. Cannibalistic Wonderful. humanoid above ground dwellers. <laughs> exists. Okay. He's cleaned up nicely, but exists. Okay. When Chud became Chad. Okay. You want to go, go ahead, Crystal. We'll... Are you sure? Okay. <clears throat> it was Chad Lee. 3, Chad the Chud. Yeah. Chad the Chud. That's perfect, actually. Yeah, there we go. A great one. Movie wasn't as good as I remember it, and as you guys mentioned, some fun pop, but too much dialogue and not enough chud. Miss Chad, it's good to see Bill's face on screen. Well, thank you, Lee Milner. <clears throat> some people would disagree. Daphne. <laughs> Daphne, more. Okay, okay, Daphne, I Daphne love you. From Crystal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Daphne, I love you, and and your last name is a little bit difficult, but Daphne Mone Moan. Ernstdorf. Ernstdorf. It's pronounced Ernstdorf. 
yeah, I'm never going to remember that as much as I would. It's actually really cool, though. Yay! I L O B this movie. And we L O V E U. Okay, oh, yeah. Chad, I watched Chud a few years back and I had totally forgotten that Daniel Stern was. I know, me too. He was great in it. I love the 80s. I pretty much grew up on Chan movies. Yes! yes. Charles Moon. Moon. Yeah. I agree with Terry about some 90s and beyond segments. That would be cool. Maybe a darkness show. Great job and great show, everyone. Sean Parks, Chud, oh, is a favorite. I would love to have seen a version made by Carpenter. Oh, my God. Can you imagine? Yeah, that would have been. Bill Gabriel, Chud, has an interesting making of. Wait, what? We didn't discuss it's, this? It's called uh -oh. Bill's Home Movies. We did. Bill Gabriel's <laughs> Home Movies. <laughs> Yes. Stop. You kill me. Okay. <clears throat> now, oh, hold, Jerry. No, just a minute. Are Jerry. you guys hearing uh yeah. are you guys hearing uh, glitches from Crystal? Yeah, a little bit. From me? Oh no. Yeah, it's well, uh, like skipping syllables, I think. Uh oh. Uh yeah. yeah. I'm gonna read this just it, because Yeah, you do it. Yeah. I don't want to lose here, anything. So. Jerry Jerry Chandler on Chud. First, I love Chud. Second, yeah, it's kind of slim on the monsters. There were some dumb things behind the scenes responsible for that. The idea to make them fully mutated monsters came later and the guy came late and the guy they hired to make the monsters had only enough time to make a few sets of heads and hands, maybe feet. I'd have to watch it again, but I actually like that. There are some story structure problems with it, most likely stemming from the way it was conceived and turned into a film along with the overall lack of filmmaking experience involved in making the film. Still, it makes a nice change of pace from other monster movies if you look at it as an unfolding mystery that becomes a monster movie but focuses more on the people who are having their lives upended by these events. The whole paragraph. Oh, no, that was two sentences there. Okay. Third, that was still part of second, Bill isn't misremembering <laughs> the ending being the diner massacre, massacre. The film had a different edit for home video and I think cable. The scene where they respond to the oh. slaughter and the diner was still in the middle of the film to help ramp up the tension around things getting worse and harder to keep under wraps. But the home video version had the actual setup and massacre as the final scene before the credits. Makes sense. I actually like that ending better with the minimal usage of the monsters in most of the film. It made it feel a bit more monster to have the last scene showing the attempts to stop the chud failed and getting a look at what felt more like an army of them on the move than any other point in the film. Fourth, wow, I could have talked about this film for two hours. No comment on how much of that would be listenable. Fifth, <laughs> been busy as heck with the craziest time of the year for us at work. A bunch of unexpected training, working on a work-related project that involved a lot of research and prepping for RavenCon. I've got more free time, and I will be playing catch-up and flooding your comment sections again. Oh you God. have been warned. <laughs> Inserts maniacal Whoa. laughter, cut Whoa. short by coughing fit and swearing at the epic <coughs> column. Yeah. And column. speaking of Raven Con, <laughs> those of you who can get out to it, it is going to be the launch party for my first published book. Yay. And the date? Oh, yes, yay. which are apparently yeah, heading heading toward me even mm. as we speak. A box What's of those date? books. Uh, I think it's the and 21st, where? 20, uh, Roanoke, Virginia. This will be oh, out, I think, yeah. before then. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, don't um, no, don't worry. So, um, yeah, it just uh, it, concerning the pollen. I yeah. traveled from Iowa to California, and I, every place I went, I got high pollen alerts on my my app. It's mm. it's, it's, it's crazy. I it's thought crazy. you said I got high pollen warts Wart. on oh, my, oh, yeah. and then you said <laughs> on my app. And that's all I like. Yeah, that's that's all right. that was uh -oh. like, you heard it too, Chad? Yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> I think, you know, that was a weird turn. Paul and works <laughs> on my ass. Everybody, just in case you didn't hear that correctly. Uh, now, <laughs> this is a Facebook post from Jerry. He said, watch it on YouTube now so you may catch it, what I'm going to talk about oh, there's... later. Bill did not remember the diner scene wrong. Keeps on going. Uh we already talked about that. The one shower scene was also topless, but has been cropped oh. in later years. Oh. So I don't know. I mean, the scene that I saw, yes, she was topless, um, but they just didn't have full frontal. 
so I don't I don't know if he's calling topless. If you're not seeing uh, nippleage, it's not it's not. It's, I don't consider it topless then. Yeah. So, right, uh, fair. so maybe that he could clarify that. Huh? Did you hmm. say nippleage? Yes, yeah. I did. I did. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I because I because I felt, I felt I silly. Like, okay, okay. So I mean, I'm just different. making sure of all these words because you're telling us you got pollen warts on your ass. You know that's you know that's what, <laughs> we use that word all the time in Iowa. Okay, just that to make sounds sure. fine. I'm uh, fine with that. I have to dig and check. I'm pretty sure I have a DVD with the diner scene as the last moment before the credits. Mm. Gives it a darker send off. Um, you ever have shawarma? <laughs> Don't tell Bill this. We'll just let him think his memory is going. Uh, <laughs> too late. About the ending. Set aside a few minutes to go through some of this. And he linked uh, Joe Bob Briggs on Chud. That would have been a good I way found to watch it. I didn't realize this, but you can go into Shudder and there's a, uh, I forget what it's called now. Joe Bob, Joe Bob on Joe Bob. It's like all <clears> it is is the Joe Bob parts. Yeah, movie list version, which is yeah, great. Yeah, which is which is kind of interesting. So um, let's see what he has here. Uh, there's so much more to this movie to just, let's see. He hits highlights on the reasons behind some of the very few things you discuss. Mm -hmm. Seriously, there's so much more to this movie to discuss. Um, and then later he said, I apologize. I said, hey, you know, it was a crazy week. We were jamming. Uh, this is, this is my sort of, oh God, it's 7.30, we can't finish this, sort of my mea culpa about this in that because I was traveling, I don't know, I'm a hard ass about trying to keep stuff on schedule. So we could so we could still have them come out on schedule. We had to record three podcasts in three <laughs> days. And if you can't gruesome, that was four podcasts in three days. And by the last one, I just... Didn't have much time to do research, and uh, I don't know. I just felt like we just sort of brain farted on it and uh, didn't it, have listen, very far to go. It's Chud. It's not like we pooped on the exorcist <laughs> here. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. Well, and he was talking about Chud. I, I actually watched the Joe Bob things, and we we touched on some of it, but just not into that same detail. But the the people that that got together to make this movie didn't know how to make movies, and were not <laughs> horror fans. They were all In there. Uh, art house and uh, you know off Broadway indie film type actors and producers and directors. The guy that directed the movie never directed any other thing before or after, uh, and it just kind of goes on and on. And there's tons of other friends in there, like Norman Mailer's wife was one of the uh, hmm. uh, the ladies that takes them down into the sewers and stuff. So, um. He's got a big long thing in here about this, and we obviously don't have time to read that right now. So I appreciate it, Jerry. Thanks, Jerry. And yeah, I do, I it, Jerry. And I kind of did take it personally, the view, very few things, because it was just one of those podcasts that I was, I was fried, and we didn't have much to talk about. So and we didn't have Chad. So you know, yeah, and we didn't have Chad. We're thrown we off. Things. Yeah. All right. So, so what are we doing next? Is Crystal? <laughs> oh boy, Crystal. Frankenstein's Island. There you go. All right. Not happening. Ask this is happening. God, you'll be sorry. I've never seen it. So yet, give the people what they want. That's what I say. Give the people what they want. I will accept this. I, I will. I will. Yeah. I will try not to take it personally if it's full, well, which I'm pretty certain it's going to be. Oh, well, you, you know not, what? Because I'm going to roast the hell out of You know of what? Movie. You know what? In the, word, <laughs> in the words of a great politician who lost an election, the people have spoken and now they must be punished. <laughs> All right. Oh. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned be... for that in two weeks. <clears throat> uh, thanks a lot, everybody. And I really do appreciate it, Jerry. Don't. Yes. Uh, yeah. not oh, my God, Jerry. Time. Jerry's so the much man. Jerry, I went and watched Jerry that knows Bob we thing love him. It was, yeah. it was really interesting. So uh, mm. hope your hope your schedule starts to. Level I'll give him a big time. sloppy kiss at RavenCon for y'all. Do it, do it. Yeah, uh, plenty of ways to stay in touch. Please leave. Obviously, we do read comments. Mm -hmm. Please leave comments on the Gruesome Magazine YouTube channel. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel, even if you're listening to audio podcasts. Uh, it helps us out, and uh, mm -hmm. we have Patreon. Uh, 
we're working on some talks about extra stuff to start adding for Patreon members. So think about that as little as $2 a month, $5 a month, whatever. Like drunk ep- episodes? Or big sloppy kids. Uh, no. Well, that's an idea. We should do live we stuff. Can, Let's do Frankenstein that. Island drunk. We oh, God, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, we got to go. Catch us again yes. here in two weeks for another great horror movie of the 1980s as only decades of horror can do it. Say good night, everybody. Night, everyone. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Some magazine.